The NFL draft is in the books. I can't wait to talk about all of the AFC teams, the winners, the losers, and a special shout out to the most glamorous of all the footballers on today's show. Check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, before we get started, we want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. IP Vanish is a virtual private network. Mike, that's a VPN for short. Thank you for telling me. Keep it simple for you. A VPN is a super helpful tool that helps you browse the internet safely. You can use it on uh, computers, tablets, phones, even things like uh, a fire stick when you're streaming media. Oh, my. Yes, I know. That's important because when you're doing things on the internet, it should be no one else's business but yours, Mike. Yeah, that's my business. That's your business. Stay out of it. Stay out. Vanish. (laughs) And you can circumvent online censorship and get protection when using public Wi-Fi. So go to ipvanish.com slash footballers. You can claim a 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $3.49 or $31.49 a year. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Tuesday, May 4th, glamorous as ever, mm. Mm. about to be, <laughs> about, to, <laughs> about to be, uh, we had an NFL draft, gentlemen, and it was a fun three days of players on the edge of their seats and yes, very, very fun coaches uh, tilting, uh, very, very fun to watch the draft. The draft landing spot's not as fun for for fantasy football. I get it. They got real NFL teams to improve. They don't just care about their fantasy points. Which is so stupid. It's selfish. So stupid so of these franchises. Well, we got we got to win Super Bowls. I'm, I'm out here trying to win my own championship. They should at least have a fantasy football representative in each of those draft rooms. Seriously. There needs to be somebody on the team considering the implications of the moves for <laughs> others. I'm willing to offer my services to one of the uh, teams out there. I don't know if you want that smoke, man, because you're going to be like, uh, hey, guys, what what do you think about taking no, no, Devontae no, I- Smith right here? <laughs> They're just It's going to be the most cursing you've ever heard in your life. I can picture it right now. Close <laughs> your eyes out there, unless you're driving, and picture this, the Jacksonville War Room. Okay. They're getting towards their pick. Yeah. I believe Najee Harris just went off the board, right? Okay. And – yes. They're, they're murmuring. They're starting to talk. Urban Meyer and company, what if we went Travis Etienne? And in the corner, Jason, <laughs> screaming at the whiteboard, pointing his finger at James Robinson's name what? over and over again. Why don't you no, shut your mouth no. about Travis Etienne? Have you seen your defense? Let's go ahead and fix a problem. That's what we need in the room. I, I, I think everyone out there believes that this is the way forward for the NFL. It's because Urban Meyer does not have James Robinson on his dynasty Mm. squad, but he has the 102. I have him on mine. (laughs) Had him on mine. Today, we're going over the AFC winners and losers, so we are going to kind of... Be talking about James Robinson. Oh, we are. He's probably on the board somewhere. Uh, We're going to talk through all the AFC teams, winners and losers on each franchise based on what happened in the NFL draft, Uh, help you out with your fantasy team, Find out if what Mike Mike is saying, the perception, whether it's true, where uh, it didn't look like a bunch of great landing spots. However, these moves do a lot more than just impact the players drafted. They impact the depth charts. They impact uh, opportunities for um, the established fantasy players in the league. So it ended up being a close battle in our NFL draft predictions. It didn't look like it would be close. Jason started the draft seven for seven. Mm-hmm. Booyah. 
And he ended the draft seven for the rest. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I was off to a fire start, and then I left the building, both metaphorically and physically. <laughs> I, I left at that point and never got another one right. Yeah, and so you had seven. I had six, and Mike had five. I had five, and I was one pick Ooh. away. It would have been a dual glamour shot with me and Mike. Yeah, because I feel very confident had the Carolina Panthers not selected Terrace Marshall, the next pick were the it was the New Orleans Saints. I think they would have grabbed him. We'll never know, Mike. We'll never know. We, but we, we will have you. We in. know who's glamorous, and it will be me. Yeah, you'll be up on the – we'll figure that out. Yeah. We'll get a team of people to get you dolled up. I mean, you're already the prettiest one here. so Yeah, the, it's a very small team needed. Maybe like one person. We just need a Gaussian blur. That's all we need, and he's set. But uh, that'll come soon. And then we, we did the big UDK – uh, promo over the weekend so everybody that got into the ultimate draft kit or udk plus we will be picking the listener league winner uh, so anybody that's pre-ordered by the end of sunday will be picking a random name out of there and you will be in the listener league with the three of us with the megalobowl winner and uh, it's going to be very fun so that'll be thursday all right let's go to the quick question here you can find us on twitter by the way at the ff ballers uh, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to catch a glimpse of the glamorous Mike Wright. Mm. Uh, you can do that there. Subscribe, click the bell. Be careful. Right. Yeah. Look, you can only look for a short while. Yes. It's kind of like a reverse Medusa situation. Mm -hmm. I, I'd really wanted to get a Medusa <laughs> reference into the show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did it. Uh, quick question of the day. Uh, Brooks posted on Instagram. He said, Who's the most improved team after the NFL draft? Oh, interesting. And out of the out of all the responses, I have a first, second, and third place. The first place team was twenty one percent, second place sixteen percent, third place eight percent. I don't know the answer yet, so you're welcome to guess. I have I have several thoughts. Um, I, I assume because it's our audience, it's not it's it's going to be fantasy related. Like the Browns to me had a great draft. Not so much for uh, fantasy, but fantasy the two teams that stick out the most to me. So I'll just throw these two out. As my guesses? I know my top answer. The Atlanta Falcons are tremendous. The fact that they didn't draft a quarterback is compounded by the fact that they also drafted a great offensive weapon. So they're one of my most approved teams because really they, they could have left the draft looking like a rebuild, about to trade Julio sure. okay, with, a, okay. with a rookie quarterback. They could have left this draft totally different uh, no, so directions. That's a, that's a very fantasy-oriented view because a rebuild might be better for the real team, but you're saying... Right now, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, Kyle Absolutely. Pitts, let's go. Um, and then the other team would be the Bears. That's the Bears one. is my number That's one That's my answer. number one. It has too. to be the number one because you're going from a franchise that has been good minus a quarterback to that, you got the best – at least the best value on quarterback of the draft. That pick absolutely fabrized the stinky shoe that is the Chicago Bears this offseason. Yes. Um, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the Hopkins drop. Okay. Oh, oh, Chicago. There you go, Chicago. All right. For that, just, for that Justin Fields pick. You did it. I, you, I was very excited for them. The thing is, oh, da, 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 da. the thing is, is it doesn't matter if he's good today. What matters is that you, you drafted him and there is hope. Right. And hope goes a long way. It even lasts into a season or two. Before, you know, you did not have hope in Andy Dalton. Did you guys see that the Vikings were getting close to drafting fields and they thought that the way the board was shaking out was that they were going to end up uh, make it, making that move? But That would have been controversial. Yeah. Yeah, very much. The, I mean, Bear, the Bears the were the number one answer. Brooks just revealed it here, 21%. The Bears, the, the second place team, Mike, do you have any other guesses before we reveal what uh, the – yeah, I'm, I mean, the quarterback is, is such a huge boost to your team. So I think that the Jaguars are, I, are one of these two teams. I agree with you. Uh, you want to reveal that number two answer there, Brooksy? It is the Jets. Ooh, well, oh. another quarterback. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. And the offensive line continues to be rebuilt. They've got an interior lineman now to go with Becton. They, um, and there in, are a lot of Michael people. Carter, Michael Carter. Michael Carter. In disappointing news, though. All Jets activities, they've had to cancel R-rated movies because their quarterback right. is too young. Not allowed to see them. Yeah. Not allowed. So, you know, a couple unless of years. His, unless his parents come with Right. Him. If the parents are yeah. there, he's allowed in. He doesn't even need an ID because he'll come with mommy and daddy. Um, Jags were third, 8%. Okay. There you go. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, do you think that when he's able to grow a mustache, he'll have one of those real spindly ones? 
And that, but he'll hang on to it because it's like the first time. He's he's too oh, handsome. I remember no. that. He he's too handsome. He knows better. When he first is able to grow a mustache, he's gonna know this doesn't belong on this pretty face. That's probably so he's fair. gonna wait until he's much much older to bring the mustache. We're, we're so and old. I'll, we're so and, old and mean. Well, it, that's it, all we are. Our come up and so be just one day he'll show up and he'll have just the the darkest densest manliest beard you've ever seen in your life and then we'll just be like you you suck man i don't like you well the jets and then the but guess what i'll find something else to make fun of him for you're darn right we will <laughs> that's one of our priorities here uh would that have impacted your selection of Mr. Uh, if he had a beard no <laughs> just his uh baby face his, his prom outfit would that have uh, affected whether he no, goes number no, two? No, he looks sharp. He looked good. He did. All right, let's uh, get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, Monday was the deadline for teams to exercise their fifth-year options on first-round picks from 2018. And uh, Baker Mayfield, Ooh. Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson – those quarterbacks were all uh, yep. those were all exercised, and then wait, there's one missing from that draft. Which one hmm. is that, Jason? Uh, Josh Rosen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his fifth year option was his second year option was not picked up. Yeah, uh, Saquon Barkley and DJ Moore and Calvin Ridley, the other big names. Um, this Rash is the interesting. Rashad part. Penny, not so much. Hayden Hurst, not so much. Sony Michelle. So how, Jason? How are you feeling now about using Hayden Hurst as your defense shield against drafting Kyle Pitts? Well, when I've talked about my defense against drafting Kyle Pitts, it's been redraft focus, and I'm 100 percent still there because uh, they 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 still have him on the roster this year, right? They do, but so, he is not part of the future plans. Well, he is not part of the future plans for the price of a fifth year option. That is that part is absolutely true, and I okay. I, I mean. He's right now. Kyle Pitts is my fourth overall player in Dynasty. So um, you mean in the rookie draft? In a rookie draft, okay. yes. But overall across all positions. So um, I, I love Kyle. Hayden Hurst is number three, though. but I do right. <laughs> um, I, I do still exercise a, a bit of well uh, yeah. caution with rookie year performance. Yeah, you're, you're boring. I can see get out of here. <laughs> I can see both sides of it. There's the side where obviously every team has a, a tight end depth chart. Every team. Kyle Pitts is not alone. And nor will he ever be alone on the tight end depth chart. Hurst can't catch the football, um, and uh, it is hard to break through. Although Pitts will have the best opportunity to do so that we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, Jarek McKinnon. Oh, oh yeah, your boy Strong Flash. signed a one year deal with the Chiefs. Oh, I hope he makes it through. Lashawn McCoy, Le'Veon Bell, and Jarek McKinnon. They've got a type, and it's called guys that used to be good as backups. He McKinnon messed things up at times last year. Yeah, he had he had juice for like two or three games, and then yeah, and then he spilled. And uh, Mason Rudolph got a one year extension, and that's news. <laughs> why? Yeah, why? it's it's news because why? What are you doing? Being a backup quarterback is um, it's hard. They signed Haskins. I mean, uh, I get it, but like, if you were ever gonna say Haskins is the better quarterback, it would be against Mason, Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. I yeah. think what happens is is most of the sideline headsets, those are custom fits. So if you bring uh, somebody else in there. You got to make a new one. You got to make a new one so they just they already have that, that mold. That so, is actually quite a bit of work. So yeah. like you just detract the amount of that from the contract, and that's the, the net for <laughs> the, the team. It's very expensive. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest-growing fantasy platform today. You guys ready for some oh, yeah. winners and losers? Let's do it. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right. We're going to walk through the AFC teams, break down what happened in the NFL draft. Remember situations. These are not set in stone. Depth charts, they change over the course of the offseason. Uh, but this is our reaction right here, right now, after a couple of days to think about it. And uh, let's get into it. Jacksonville. They were one and fifteen last year. The big offensive pieces they added: Trevor Lawrence, obviously. weren't they one and zero? They were one and zero. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They beat that, the Colts. That's when the Gardner Minshew victory laps began. Yeah. Uh, Travis Etienne went twenty fifth. This was the kind of shock and awe of the first round in terms of fantasy fallout because James Robinson, undrafted free agent, fourteen hundred total yards, 
third or fourth in rushing in the NFL. Pretty much the only bright spot on a dark hole of a team last season. Not for Urban Meyer, though. And he was rewarded with his the deletion of James Robinson from the NFL before he can sign a meaningful contract. Sucks. So uh, this was obviously – uh, I had a strong reaction to this, being a James Robinson truther, <laughs> a dynasty manager of James Robinson. However, we must move forward. They had a uh, – 40, 41% of their targets are vacated in players leaving the team. That's the third highest in the NFL. And we know that the running back position is one that can absorb the that type of uh, absence of targets. Brand new head coach, brand new quarterback. I actually have set aside my hate for the move because I don't think it was the best move for a team that was literally 31st in about five defensive categories. Sure. But I've set that aside. To say, I think Travis Etienne has an opportunity to be the best rookie running back year one and moving forward. I don't buy anything that Urban Meyer said about him being a third down back. Uh, if you look at the history of Urban Meyer as a head coach, a meticulous planner, you can read the Robert Wilson article that just went on our website, thefantasyfootballers.com. He represents very, very, very good things for pass catching running backs. Etienne is the best one of those in the draft. Lots of big playability. I just think I think things are going to be very good in Jacksonville, very quick on offense, um, much the way they were in Arizona when Kyler Murray was drafted, and yet the team wasn't great, but the offense, you saw the flashes right away. You had some fantasy value right away. That's my take, but I'd love to hear your guys' winners and losers on this team. Yeah, I mean, the clear loser is James Robinson, but I see, I, I don't love this landing spot for Travis Etienne, in, especially in the short term. Um, while I agree with you that I don't buy – Urban Meyer saying that, you know, he's only going to be a third down back and that uh, James Robinson is first. Uh, Carlos Hyde and James Robinson are the one. Yeah, two he, he mentioned them both. Yeah, but I do believe that all three will be involved. This is not going to be uh, an opportunity of 250 touches or anything uh, close to that for Travis Etienne. So um, I, I think that, you know, hopefully I, I really hope that the big winner here is, is the wide receivers. The group, you know, LaVisca Chenault, DJ Chark, because you grabbed Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. But I'm I'm not in love with the landing spot yet for Travis Etienne. It is nice that he's paired with a guy we know, you know, we'll dump the ball off to him. They did that last year and well, they got a connection. Yeah, they went to college together undefeated together. Um, beat Urban Meyer together in the championship game. Uh, or Urban Meyer's former team. Mm hmm Mike, what was what's your? I mean, those are two very different viewpoints. I'm very bullish on ETN uh, and because I'm, of the familiarity and the offensive system. I am in the middle. I, he, there, there is a world where he becomes the number one running back. That's not how I'm a rookie running back. That's not how I'm projecting it because he will. I agree with Jason that he he won't see the workload that Najee will see, but he has the skill set that he can be an Alvin Kamara type of a player where he's incredibly fast, has incredibly good hands, but how often do they get down to the goal line? Because that's the difference between uh, a a player like Kamara, where he's he doesn't have the same workload as some guys, hyper-efficient, but he's also on a very high-scoring offense. So the, that it'll come down to how in, how good is Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, and, and they're not going to be good enough for that division, and that's one of the reasons I love ETN. This is a team with one of the worst defenses in football. It's not going to get fixed overnight. They're going to be playing from behind constantly. One of the reasons James Robinson was great last year is the volume of pass catches that no one expected. So we will see how that shakes out. I would love to be wrong, completely wrong. I would love James Robinson to just establish himself in training camp and ETN. That's because you don't have ETN on your, your dynasty team. That is team. right, yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise you would be flip-flopping that. But no, my, the tr my true belief is that ETN will take over and it will make me cry. Uh, the Texans at 4-12. and 12. They added David Mills. Their first pick was a third-round pick. He is a quarterback, if you haven't heard of David, uh, Davis Mills. Sorry, yeah. Davis Mills. And uh, that speaks volumes of what is going on in Houston. There is, we still have absolutely no idea what's going on or what the end result is going to be, but the team is making preparations. 
Well, and they even even in their preparations, they end up tripping over the realities of the draft because I believe the previous yes two picks oh, yeah. it was Mond and it was Trask, right? Yeah, two of the la- two of the previous three picks. It yeah. was like right before them. They're they're rubbing their hands, thinking, okay, these these three we'll get big, that second tier. The, the, yeah, the the three big second tier guys will get our pick, and then <laughs> they had to be sweating so bad. So we don't have to linger on the Texans. I'll say this: they didn't draft another running back. David Johnson's the running back. Something that. If you can well, make it and through Mark unscathed. And yeah. But no additions to that backfield. Yeah, and then, they already had a bunch. But uh, they did draft Nico Collins in the right. third. I like him. I really liked his tape. He is a, a Mike Evans type of a player. Not calling him Mike Evans by any stretch, but that's the, the arc type. I mean, he's a big dude. You know, 6'4", over 220. Uh, and I think that he can make an impact. He tracks the deep ball very, very well. So I, I think he is a, a huge addition to the wide receiver core for the Texans, which is it's, it, it's Brandon Cooks. I don't know if I've ever seen a team as bad as the Texans. Or, or, or you know, they're in the running for just what a trash roster. You hadn't seen Al Borland's and, dynasty team? <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I was just talking real NFL, but that's a great point, Andy. <laughs> Um, oh, man. but, um, no, but the reality is what's insane is I've never seen a team this bad with so little capital. Like their first pick was in the third round. They had a couple. They they had no draft okay. capital. This franchise. They is, had a they had a, a a bad manager. Yeah, running things for a little bit. Uh, breaking news. Uh, according to Al Borland, his dynasty team is good. Okay, so, it's gotten a lot better. It was, it was know, two years ago. When I know. It was a, a low hanging fruit joke right there. And they grabbed Brevin Jordan, the tight end out of Miami, who is one of the more interesting pass catching tight ends. But they also have a, a lot of tight ends on the team, and they took him in the fifth. So. They didn't have many picks because, <laughs> yeah, well, they, yeah, they're gone. Yep. Uh, the the Colts took a fourth round tight end. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's really the biggest. Yeah, no, no real fantasy fallout. So T. Y. Hilton, team. Michael Pittman. Okay, you're going to have your chance this year with Carson Wentz, which is great. I mean, if you are a dynasty team that has T. Y. Hilton, you might get a year of value. You might. I think there were a lot of people surprised with how the draft fell that they didn't take a tackle to replace their uh, retired tackle this this offseason. There were some really good names on the board, and they went with edge rushers. So that's bad for Carson Wentz. But for the most part, this is their draft was mostly irrelevant for fantasy. All right, let's talk about the Tennessee Titans, 11-5. and five. Thought they might take a wide receiver earlier than when they did. They were my destination for, I believe, well, I think Elijah, Elijah Moore. Moore. Yeah, but uh, fourth but, round pick though, Des Fitzpatrick and Caleb Farley, the the cornerback who had all the red flags of injury, he fell to them, so they decided they would take the shot. Uh, so they ended up with a fourth round wide receiver. There is opportunity. But the winner of the draft, not that he needed to be. I mean, A.J. Brown's going to demand all the targets oh A.J. Gosh. Brown gets. But you didn't bring in a high profile Correct. across the field, somebody to come in on day one and threaten for targets. So I think Fitzpatrick has a long – for a dynasty league, a deeper dynasty league, he has a chance to break through. But A.J. Brown is uh, – Josh Reynolds, they're – they're hanging out. You want to talk about target market share that, I mean, it's going to be, A.J. Brown used to be someone that you would be like, oh, you know, we look at him like he's going to get a bunch of deep passes and he'll end the year at 75 receptions. He could be a hundred reception type of player just by necessity of this roster. I, I keep, I continue to move A.J. Brown higher and higher in my rankings and that was, yeah, I mean, it, I got, I, I lost, got a name I lost for him. I lost him on my. We we uh, had our keeper, keeper lottery and uh, I lost AJ Brown. It was very sad. Yeah, I lost Justin that. Jefferson. We're both mourning. Yeah, uh, I will say this: I I Devonte Adams. He AJ Brown feels like he is entering a Devonte Adams zone with a little bit. How much of this offense may go through him at this point? Sixty percent of the targets are vacated this year. Corey Davis is not there. AJ Brown is moving into year three. Um. This could be a player that, like, every first quarter takes care of what you need from him in the fantasy department, and then the last three quarters are gravy. Yeah, I mean, if only they had Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that, that would, that would make a pie. Yeah, that would but, make a big difference. But uh, hopefully the Packers if, can keep 
Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Oh, oh, right. So far they are. Professional transition. We want to thank Keeps for helping Keeps <laughs> our hair. Look, uh, two out of three men, we experience some form of hair loss by the time we're 35. You've been hearing me talk about Keeps for a while because, you know, I'm one of them two out of three. And uh, look, there are two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss and Keeps offers both. They offer generic. It can be very affordable. They start at just $10 a month uh, and very convenient. Virtual doctor consultations, medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You, you don't have to leave your home. This is easy, and prevention is the key because treatments can take four to six months to see results, so you want to act now before you lose your hair. And if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash footballers and you'll receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash footballers. You want to keep that hair where it is. You got to get yeah, on your head. On your head. <laughs> At Foot Glam, we want to thank Indochino for sponsoring today's show. Indochino offers completely custom fitted suits, coats, and more at a surprisingly affordable price. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail. I recently, in the last few months, was able to get into the showroom of Indochino, got measured up, got myself this super swanky-looking blue soup, got the got the pinstripes on it, and once I got this thing in Did the mail... Did you get a glamour shot over there or no? I, I might have to bust it out for the glamour <laughs> right. shot. Uh, it's way too nice for that. But <laughs> it is. But that's I put it on, and this thing... Like a glove. I've never put on a suit where I've impressed myself Dude, so my, much. Look, my body makes it very uncomfortable to <laughs> wear clothes. Like I, sure. I I don't if you saw my IG post, I was rocking my Indochino you were, suit. Yes. If it's perfect, it's you awesome. Looked, you looked sharp, you looked dapper. You too can look that way with a custom fitted suit made by Indochino. And the best part is the suit starts at just two ninety nine with customizations included. Shop the wedding collection or book a virtual style consultation at Indochino.com. And right now, you can get 50 bucks off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Cincinnati Bengals, first pick, fifth pick overall. Jamar. Jamar Chase. Instant reaction, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, your futures have changed. Yes. Yeah. And it's really I, I I put the emphasis more on to Boyd. I agree with that. Uh T. Higgins, however, Jason the tilted ceiling, his head and was Yeah, I mean you, you think it affects Boyd more than yes. it affects T. Higgins? Yes, because it does. Tyler Boyd has to have volume. And if you have a very I I think Jamar Chase is elite. Uh, in our in our rookie draft that we have going on, I took him at the 103. I took him over Kyle Pitts because of my belief in what Jamar Chase is going to become and will be sooner than later. And when you have – and T. Higgins is a good wide receiver, so I'm not I'm not taking a crap on him. And Boyd is, is good too, but when you have two excellent options, one elite option – you start to really siphon uh, a volume away from your slot wide receiver. I, I guess I, I completely understand the argument of he needs volume and volume won't be there necessarily, but his role is secure. He's not changing. You know, he's the slot guy. Sure. He's going to live there. Um, and, and I, I don't and see so his Higgins is staying the same. His it, his role staying the same. If you look at the volume that AJ Green targets right. were last year, <laughs> that's the, the empty, problem. The, the empty volume. The problem is we wanted T Higgins role to not stay what it was his rookie year, but really take that step forward. The reality that is won't happen. there's 104 targets left by A.J. Green. Plenty to go Jamar Chase's way. This is good news for the fantasy implications of Joe Burrow. That's great. I think they should have protected him and kept him they upright took, a little bit better. They took a tackle but, in the second round. Um, you know, but this is and a, the fourth. a team connection. You know, the, the giant stats that we saw last time Jamar Chase was in college putting up, you know, crazy numbers. That was that was with Joe Burrow. So um, my outlook on Chase is is very high as well. If you can take advantage of negative reactions, this is just my personal opinion on T Higgins and get a bargain basement price in a dynasty league. I sure. would I would do that. Yeah. T Higgins is very young, had a great rookie season. 
and um, they're still going. If this is a good offense, if this is a top ten offense, at some point in the next few years, Higgins is going to be. You know, you're going to be looking at a. Uh, dig stealing or at least two good options on an offense situation yeah. we are doing several dynasty drafts right now you know a lot of dynasty leagues are kicking off their rookie drafts and when you get into the second round it is such an absolute crapshoot and i would be offering every single one of those picks to a t higgins manager and say hey because if they if t higgins second year player was in the draft i'd be drafting them ahead of a lot there of these go. nebulous wide receivers so if the fantasy manager is bent out of shape and they want to go after a rookie and that's the buzz right now, then see if you can trade some of the picks for T. Higgins. Yeah, this is not a James Robinson situation for T. Higgins. No, it's not. The other – yeah, I mean, you mentioned Joe Burrow, big winner, and uh, hopefully they can protect him. I mean, they get back last year's first-round pick. They drafted a tackle in the second round. Huge loser, obviously, Drew Sample. I mean, this is, you know, yeah. it was, it was going to yeah. be a thing. It was going to be a huge thing, but sorry, Drew. They also did not replace uh, the mustached Gio Bernard in this draft. Joe Mixon is going to uh, – how, how are your feelings about Joe Mixon? I'll be quiet. Yeah, I'm all in. I'm so all in. I have completely – over the course of this offseason, I have, I have changed where he is now – um, I, I think he's going to dominate this year. The, they are committed to him. He's going to be on the field, uh, you know, as much as, m you know, you can ever want your fantasy running back on the field. So long as he stays healthy, I don't see how he possibly finishes outside Did the top 10. Did you not 10 see now. that in the sixth round they drafted Captain America? They Oh, they they got Evans? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Chris Dude, Evans. He, could you imagine Captain America as a running back? He'd be pretty <laughs> good. Be Do awesome. you get to use the shield? You don't no, need to. Uh, yeah, you don't need to. It's more like a Derrick Henry. They just kind of ride like a backpack as yeah. you keep running. Okay. So watch out for that. Yeah. Um, but no, I six I, rounds pretty late. Oh, I'm not. That was for a joke. Captain America. Oh, yeah. Well, it's because they didn't realize that he was eligible because he went by his actor name. Yeah. Mm, gotcha. Um, no, I think Joe Burrow. If you need a a jolt after the injury and you're a dynasty manager that drafted him and you're like, okay, what's the future? Jason, I know you have him on your roster. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, here we go. I can see it now. Jamar Chase coming in and an offense with a lot of potential. The Browns. The Browns. Hmm. Huge winners in real life. I am so in on the Browns. I think they had a great draft. Fantasy-wise, is there even anything to discuss? Well, I mean, they took a burner in the third round. Um yeah, but he's not that fast on the field. I know he's like track. Uh, he was he, his path was literally he was choosing between Olympics and football. Oh, Marquise Goodwin for Anthony Schwartz, is right? The, is the players? But do you think that Schwartz affects? Schwartz is as big as mine. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think like uh, not that we had huge hope, but we're we're a little dynasty centric right now. We're talking about rookies and things. Did you have any sort of hope for Donovan Peoples Jones, who was that? type of a he was kind of that archetype for the team last year where didn't do a whole lot but hit on a few big plays where you thought okay maybe this player could do something no I I never was a real people's Jones believer and and what we saw I'm not inspired so um I think the way that I look at this team is just more of what we saw last year except hopefully Odell Beckham's out there and you know, it's they're going to be winning a lot of games. So this is what they did for their defense. The way that some of these players fell to them in the draft is good news for Chubb. Um, and actually, you know, it's funny because you think, oh, you're winning, and so the running game. But it was oftentimes when they were actually winning. That was at the fourth quarter. They just when Kareem Kareem Hunt comes in and finishes the job. Baltimore Ravens selected Rashad Bateman in the first round, wide receiver Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. Uh, which was a collective groan to a degree if you were a Bateman truther. Yeah. Because he, I'm having a hard time. Let, let me just confessional here. We're putting together the updated dynasty, the rookie rankings and the, and the updated dynasty startup rankings. I am trying to see a future here for Rashad Bateman that I'm excited about. Um, part of that narrative, if you want to paint it, would be one where it's like, okay, Hollywood really was never built to demand a target chair, and he really is more of a deep threat, um, not a primary option. That that's that right. that's the storyline I'm trying sure. to find for Rashad Bateman because the truth is you've heard us talk about it on the show a lot. Not a lot of pass attempts in Baltimore. Now, 
Drafting Rashad Bateman is a great thing for Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. You'd rather have him out there on the field in the pocket when he throws the football, having Hollywood and Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman out there being threats down the field and that efficiency increase for Lamar. But if you were a Bateman fan, the path to glory seems a ways away. Well, and honestly, it's 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 bad for a lot of players. It's bad for Hollywood Brown. Yeah, it it's is. It's bad for Mark Andrews to a degree. It's it's good for Lamar Jackson. It's good for the Ravens. But they brought in Sammy Watkins. They drafted another really good wide receiver in the fourth round as well. So they they see the problem with their team. They remember last year when teams knew what the Ravens were doing like they they were calling their plays out and they know we've got to get more wide receivers in here that are capable spread things out pass more but at the end of the day if you have a mobile quarterback like Lamar Jackson you're not going to be throwing it 500 times you're going to be throwing it 400 times and now with more options to throw the ball to if the ball gets spread around more it doesn't matter if the pie gets larger it's a situation I want to avoid yeah I, Bateman is Bateman has the 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 build and the skills to be an elite wide receiver. He's got good speed. He has great body control. Uh, so it, I'm with you though, Andy. If I, yeah, I am so torn because I, I'm 100% bought into the talent of Rashad Bateman, and they they don't have Mark Andrews is the number one target on the team. So Bateman could come in and be. A thirty, he can become a thirty percent type of a target share. And that, if you have a small pie, but you're hitting the thirties, then everything is okay. And I want to be clear: he he can have great seasons with Baltimore, even in this system. It's just from a fantasy perspective, predictability is very difficult with low passing volume. Yeah, you will be happy when he scores the way you were happy when Hollywood scored. That type of situation. So, and as a rookie, you know, it'll be interesting to see how established he becomes. Pittsburgh drafted Najee Harris. Oh, oh brother. Najee. In the first round, Pat Fryermuth tight end in the second round. Tried to patch up that line in the third and the fourth. Yeah, which needs help. I yes, mean, it does. Uh, and we haven't talked about it here on this show, but mixed reactions for me when Najee was drafted. Number one, very few places you can go and guarantee a three-down workload. He landed in one of those spots. The things that should be out there for knowledge sake, the kinds of things that are important for you know a fair evaluation of what you have on uh, in a draft pick. This was a bad bad run blocking O-line last season. Mm -hmm. 31 out of 32, fifth consecutive year that Pittsburgh's run blocking uh, uh score on Pro Football Focus decreased and they basically gave up running the football last season, which obviously is what motivated this move for them. They laid it at the feet of James Conner. That's not the only problem. If you're going Agreed. backwards for five years and they pass through the air or they ran through the air with these little short passing game that they don't want big Ben to have to do again this year. Um, overall, Najee Harris is a, a talented three down back. He can catch the football and they lost three offensive linemen this offseason. Marquise Pouncey being the big one. So give me year one for Najee. Give me the next five years for Najee. First year. Najee is going to be great. That's yes. how I see it. The, the, the reality is, He's in a place where he's going to touch the ball more than 300 times, and it might be inefficient. That offensive line's not that great. Um, you know, he might struggle to really impress us and have this outlandishly great rookie season. I don't think he's going to come in and Saquon come in and you know Ezekiel Elliott this thing and just all of a sudden next year he's the top or the top three picks in the draft. I don't think that the team on offense with the offensive line is good enough for that. But what I am confident in is that I don't see a path for him to finish outside the top 15 running backs because we have enough history of if you catch the ball enough and get enough carries, you can suck and still finish above that threshold. Um, so I, I think he's going to be a really solid option. He'll be on several of my redraft teams. Longer term, it's funny because you don't know if it's going to get better or worse as they continue to improve the offensive line but then lose Big Ben. But at the same time, what Big Ben are you really losing now? He sucked last year. Yeah, he still represents stability at the position because his wide receivers produced. And so you at least had Deontay Johnson relevant, Juju relevant. I remember 
the Mason Rudolph days. Oh, oh. And, and, and Duck they Hodges. They, Duck Hodges. They thought it was so great we need to get Mason Rudolph back in here. Yeah, I, uh, Najee Harris with Dwayne Haskins. That's what you're saying? You ready for it? They won 12 games last year. Yeah, they have a great defense. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. I think we got we got bogged down in some of the bad play, but they it was a tough end of the season. I, I, they are, their offense is loaded with top tier players. Uh, I think that Big Ben has enough to provide another year. Uh, I, I think they made the right choice going for it one more time. And I agree with Jason that Najee's going to touch the ball 300 plus times. His skill set is truly a three down running back. Uh, so, I mean, to me, I mean, I, you, we can split hairs. Maybe there was. Maybe people believe there was a slightly better option, but to me, with Mike Tomlin's history guaranteed and locking the three down roll in, I think that this was the best and place I'm he a, could go. I'm really, I'm not trying to talk Najee down at all. I'm just bringing this is the singular worst rushing team in football last year. So what you're asking of Najee is simply to overcome that. Worst in yards per game, worst in the NFL. So it is a lot to lay at his feet. So if your presumption of 300 carries is correct, good to go. If that's incorrect, well, 300 touches, 300 touches. But yeah. if that's wrong, and the efficiency is not there, that would be your trap door in a great rookie season for a first round um, running back. Everything you're saying just makes me sad, because <laughs> not because of Najee, but because you talk about how putrid it was. The Texans ran better. The Lions ran better. And, Jacksonville. And why I'm sad is because now the Arizona Cardinals have James Conner, and I know a lot of it's on the the O line, but not all of it, and now we get to play with that guy. That makes me sad. Okay. All right. The uh, the Jets. Let's move on. Zach Wilson at number two overall. Elijah Moore in the second round. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, sneaky, good rookie wide receiver with opportunity to uh, kind of build with Zach Wilson. And then Michael Carter, one of my favorite picks of the draft in the fourth round out of North Carolina – Ada Carey in his senior season kind of faded into the background with Javante Williams, but hey, talent and opportunity. Opportunity might be there quickly, in my opinion, for James Car or for Michael Carter uh, with that second pick of the fourth round. It's for, evaluating Michael Carter is extremely tough. He was I didn't love him as a prospect. He's a bit – and I'm not taking the college production away from him because he, he absolutely did produce. He had more yards from scrimmage than his teammate, uh, Javante. But he's smaller. He's not athletically jumping out of the uh, the building. And he was drafted in the fourth round. So we, just, we, do, we know the history of a fourth-round running back. When they do hit, you're like, holy crap, a fourth-round running back turned into something. Can't we call but it like third round you, you, asterisks, like you, the very end? Sure, you can because it was the beginning of the late, fourth round. Late third round. <laughs> you can, but it's a whole other day. So I, I think the fact that it's uh, nearly 24 hours later. Yeah, but that meant that the GMs had all the time in the world to think about who they really want, and then they 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 come well, he, back, gather together. and I. They could have had Javante, by the way. They could have had Javante with the second pick of the, the second round. Yes, right. and they They passed, passed, and they got Carter in the fourth round with the second pick. Um, yeah, and I and I think that's the the right way to do it because they they were able to take Elijah Moore and their offense is better with Elijah Moore and Michael Carter than with Javante and whatever wide receiver they would have got if they were to reverse this. And I actually did really like Michael Carter's tape. Um, you know, when I was looking at him as a prospect, I thought he was electric. I was shocked at his forty time because when I watched the tape, he didn't look slow. You to thought me. he looked fast. He never looked slow. I felt to like me. he would get run down every every I, time well, he would break out. He would get run down. I I will agree with the long speed. You know, he he's not one of those that finishes the run taking it sixty yards to the house. But um, you know that that wasn't really Najee's thing either. But um, I do think he was good, and there weren't many places with a better opportunity for Correct. a running back. I mean, yes. Atlanta could have been a spot. Miami could have been a spot. The Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers, those are those are the big ones. So I, I think Michael Carter is a name that you need to know for this season in fantasy football. In Dynasty Leagues, there are two types of rookie picks. There are the kind that you have to wait for, and then there are kind the kind that can surprise you with plug-and-play, year-one ability, and at least he fits that mold to me where it's like, man, if I draft Michael Carter, I might get to play him at in flex yes. this year. 
Yeah, you, you'll probably know sooner than later. The Patriots, Mac Jones, ends up their first-round pick, fell to the 15th overall pick. Uh, Patriots did not need to trade to go get him. They also drafted a running back, Ramondre Stevenson, in the fourth round. LeGarrette Blunt, 2.0. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the turnstile at running back continues for uh, New England. And winners and losers from the Patriots. Cam Newton's a loser. Well, <laughs> put that in context, but you know what I mean. I mean, you draft a rookie in the in the first round, and that's going to be a threat to his starting uh, yeah, job. It, it's one of those things where I could easily see Mac Jones not playing this year. Um, it, it's it's a matter of uh, Cam will be the starter. I'm convinced of that. This is uh, you know a difficult offensive system to learn, and this is kind of his team right now. It's a matter of winning games. If the Patriots are winning a bunch of games and Cam is leading them and he's not causing problems, I think Cam will play out this year and then they'll make that transition. Um, it's obviously not great news because if you don't have Mac Jones there and Cam is struggling, no one's calling for the switch. The The pressure to go to the rookie isn't there. And obviously Cam can struggle because we saw it last year. He was hashtag not good. Um, but with with better weapons, another year in the system – I think Cam plays pretty much the whole season, barring injury, and uh, that will be good for Mac Jones to, you know, be able to be groomed behind the scenes. And Ramondre Stevenson, he's also a fourth round running back. You need to know the name. Uh, I, don't get overexcited. We have no. He is an insane prospect to try and figure out. Jason, I think laid it out best. Of like, you saw some terrible tape. You saw some excellent stuff. Uh, and the Patriots, they're wild. When it comes to running back, Sony Michelle will not be on the team next year. What's going to happen with Damian Harris? Is he the starter now? Is Sony in the doghouse because they didn't pick up the option? Is Sony some, somehow still the starter? But Ew. I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah, I'm not That's, interested in any it, Patriots running back here. I, I'm, but we're talking about rookie drafts. Yeah. So you're not. So you wouldn't take. Uh, you wouldn't take Ramondre in like the second round. Um, late, late second, maybe. I mean, eventually you have to take everybody. Um, that but is the I, rules. <laughs> I am not, I am not, uh, bullish on the outlook right. here. If Tom Brady was still the quarterback and the touchdown opportunities were what LeGarrette Blunt did that one year and, and you've got him as your big goal line back and Ramondre, uh, as, as we often call him, um, you, <laughs> as I often call him. <laughs> Uh, can catch the ball too. He's actually, you know, he's he's a capable pass catcher. But with Cam on this current version of the team, I don't expect him to get off to a hot start. I would, I I can almost promise you, Mac Jones sees the field this year. That even if Cam Newton is what they want to do, there were so many games that were so butt ugly last year. If Cam, the odds of Cam Newton not giving you one of those games that talks you into a Mac Jones start the next week, I'll be shocked. Uh, Dolphins, Jalen Waddle, six Waddle, overall Waddle. pick. Hunter Long in the third, tight end out of Boston College. Actually, the number one uh, receiver at tight end in his, uh, the last season. And um, they went with uh, and, Jared Dokes in and the all seventh the, round. The gas man, Miles Gaskin. Survives. <laughs> survives the NFL draft. The most unlikely survival of holding on to a starting job. Miles let, Gaskin, but here we are. Let he, me just talk to Urban Meyer for a second. <laughs> Urban, do you want here? Here's what Miami did. They they had a great player in Miles Gaskin. Then they added, they added Malcolm Brown. Okay, veteran depth, and then they didn't draft another running back for no reason. They didn't reach. They didn't reach for one. You, Urban. You had James Robinson. You added Carlos Hyde, the Malcolm Brown of this example, and then you reached, and you hurt me. But Miles Gaskin uh, last year averaged the seventh most running back touches per game. That will come down. I do believe when the team goes and pursues Malcolm Brown that there will be some goal line usage there. But huge winner, Miles he's, Gaskin, because he could have been – he could have been deleted mm -hmm. by an early Travis Etienne or Javante Williams. Yeah, he, he – I mean, I, I would say that like the two biggest winners – in the entire draft are Mike Davis and Miles Gaskins by by retaining the role that you hoped and did not think they would have. But regarding the Dolphins, Tua is a big winner as well. Getting Jalen Waddle, right. getting a second round, you know, the the offensive lineman from Notre Dame, 
th- that's really good for him. And and they obviously in the off season they they added more speed with Will Fuller and they've got Kasicki there. So we've said this before, but we're gonna find out everything we need to know about Tua this year. If he's not good, then he can't be. I'm rooting for him. Well, yeah, we're not rooting against him. I hope everyone's him. rooting for him. Well, there was a time when rooting against him meant rooting for Ryan Fitzpatrick, so I think it got Okay, me. no, it became, I, was, I was actively against him yeah, when they benched Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's what Fitzpatrick. I mean. It, it okay. became a thing where we didn't we wanted Fitzpatrick and nothing else, so I'm just I'm rooting for Tua. Fair. Um, he's gone through some stuff, and I think he has I, – I still think he has it. think he's going to be a really good quarterback? I think he got a 50-50 shot, but I, I'm not out on him because of his rookie season. I think that, you know, players develop, and – um we're going to know, like you said, he's got everything around him that he needs in a division that he can compete in. The Bills drafted a six-round wide receiver. They drafted a couple of offensive linemen before that, a couple yeah. of edge rushers before that. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss still kicking. Say so that's They did not draft a running back, and they were one of the teams that were being frequently linked in mock drafts to one of the big three. This so is great news for Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and the wide receiving core as well. Sure. Because it just means more of the same. That's what it means. More of the same. You're not going to be able to run the ball like the way that you want to with Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Let's just go do what you did. Throw throw the ball a lot, Josh. Yeah, do it well. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be more of the same. It worked pretty well last season. Mm-hmm. The Broncos surprised the world. They traded up. They traded up. They traded up for Javante Williams out of North Carolina, the more heralded prospect, uh, the other half of the Michael Carter uh, tandem, and it was a second-round pick with the Falcons, who could have taken him. I mean, the Falcons could have just solidified their backfield. Yep, they chose not to. Uh, so, I mean, Melvin Gordon, he's in the contract year, so he, I, I didn't see him being on a Bron- or being in a Broncos uniform next year but this is this is a great spot this is for, the future for them this is the future and Javante is an excellent player this is a great spot for him I would still be drafting Javante very close to where you had him in your pre-draft evaluation just knowing you're gonna have to wait a little bit but I he is going to be worth the weight in my opinion I agree this is uh it's an excellent spot for him for dynasty just not this year. So like re- I think even this year he could he could end up being 50-50 even slightly or he could take Melvin Gordon's job. He's talented and maybe by the end of the year he can he can eat into it more, but I don't think he's going to be very fantasy relevant this year. But Melvin Gordon's an unrestricted free agent in 2022. He's not going to be back at all. This is going to be Javante Williams backfield mm-hmm. and I would be happy to draft him like you said Mike, exactly where you had him as the third running back. Um, off the board, and but you just know in a dynasty league when you make that pick, you have to plan for the worst, which is you're not going to really play him this year. We'll see. It seems like Melvin Gordon is the kind of guy that can get himself into the doghouse. Right. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, Gordon, Javante, they both have to stand next to Drew Locke right now because Justin Fields did not go to the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos fans are – Crying still, I believe. They went from Aaron Rodgers rumors to, well, Justin Fields is just sitting there for us to Drew Locke is still our quarterback. Man, I'm sorry for your lots. Pat, Patrick Sertan, and, and I think he is, but I'm just throwing out Patrick Sertan better be who, who the Broncos think he is. It doesn't they, matter. It doesn't matter if he's who he is. If he's the best cornerback that's ever lived, it, all that matters is Justin Fields. If Justin Fair. Fields is great, then the best cornerback ever was irrelevant and it was a bad pick. I just imagine us looking at this draft and seeing Justin Fields and Javante Williams back to back to start the draft mm-hmm. with all the promise that these weapons, Jer- uh, Judy and, and Sutton returning and Hamler Fant. and Fant and then the defense and how strong it's, it should be uh, under Vic Vangio. So um, no Hopkins music for Broncos fans, but no. Javante will have a bright future. The Chargers, uh, not a lot. Uh, Josh Palmer in the third round. Yeah, they were interesting. Kind of a surprising pick, Josh Palmer, ahead of guys. They could have taken Terrace Marshall there. Yeah. Was he, it? Uh, I believe he, so. He, he's a he's a big body. No, Palmer was a third. Wasn't Terrace was in the – I could be wrong. What, I, yeah, I need to – I'm remembering Brooks Terrace. Brooks will vet that for Terrace us. That's what second. he does. But there were still other – There were some names out there. Bigger, bigger names, at least, you know, just as far as marquee type of players. I mean, Josh Palmer – 
out of Tennessee never surpassed 500 receiving yards in a season. So he seems it's, like a potential Mike Williams replacement for down the line. That's when I when I saw that one of my first reactions was dynasty outlook of Mike Williams got a little lower to me. Yeah, and I just because we weren't, you know, pining for Josh Palmer before the draft process when when a team takes a player in the third round, you have to pay attention to that. That's a day two pick that is a very high draft uh, capital move. So pay attention. Like, Marshall was earlier, so I got okay. that. I got that wrong. But yeah, Palmer was somebody that, like you said, you have to pay attention to it, especially on a team that may have some opportunities. You had actually predicted a Devonte Smith yeah. home for uh, the Chargers being a home for Devonte Smith. So. Um, we were almost there, and the, then the stupid Eagles got. You know, they they had Rashawn Slater, the tackle, drop to them. Uh, this was a heralded pick by most draft, uh, uh, most of the draft community. Justin Herbert's offensive line continues to get stronger. Austin Eckler is a winner from yeah. that move as well. This is a team that added a prolific center in the off season. They got uh, they got better. Dude, I'm up so front. I'm so excited for the Chargers. I really believe I, I in Justin be, Herbert, too. I, I do, too. If I was a Chargers fan, I'd be so pumped for this coming season. I think they're going to be the breakout team of 2022 the, or 2021, the, the team that, you know, the, look, they, they kind of sucked last year. They, they lost a lot of games um, that were close. Their defense was injured. I think they're going to be phenomenal. They've done it the right way. The, what they've done to the offensive line is great. Big, big fan of the Chargers. Do you like the Chargers NFL prospects, or do you like the – uh, Broncos NFL prospects more today. Today, definitely the Chargers. Because of the Justin Fields thing? <laughs> no, because of the Drew Locke thing. Okay. The Raiders, uh, well, there's not a lot for fantasy purposes here. They drafted a tackle. Uh, some say reached for a tackle in the first round with Leatherwood, safety, edge rusher, safety, safety, cornerback, and a center in the seventh round. Um, the, cur the current wide receiver core is is stable. Yeah, I mean, Rugs, John Brown John is there. Brown, um, you 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 lost Nelson Aguilar. So you, Henry Ruggs is very interesting to me because I've been kind of a doubter from the from day one, and I feel like I was able to somewhat victory lap last year because he was used not in the way that you hoped for fantasy. He was used in the way that you, these guys are always used, but now he's got another opportunity. He missed you know significant time with some injuries and. And now he's got an opportunity here. I like, like I like Ruggs. What I saw when he had opportunities on the field, it was so up and down of a season. Carr was so up and down, and then the injuries weren't mixed in there. And Aguilar had a breakout season, and Aguilar is gone. So there is an opportunity there, and it's probably a name worth bringing up. Yeah, and I will whisper it into the ether because I still <laughs> believe in him too, but Brian Edwards was the third-round pick last year. He also got injured in – Missed quite a few games. You then... can't say that, Mike, because you can't lay too much at Derek Carr's feet. You have to give him very small <laughs> goals, and uh, but you, I guess you said you'd whisper it. So yes, yes, I'm not shouting it. I am <sighs> simply. You whispering. don't want to confuse him. Mm -hmm. Just kind of mm -hmm. Brian Edwards. Yeah, <laughs> just think. Just think about it, man. Just One... think, think about throwing him the ball. <laughs> One final team to talk about: the Chiefs. Chiefs went linebacker center with their first two picks, both second rounders. Offensive players, they added Noah Gray, fifth-round tight end. They added Cornell Powell, a fifth-round wide receiver. Honestly, out of Clemson. Not a lot to see here, though. Yeah, there, there is not a lot. The draft Twitter sure got very excited for Powell. Uh, I get it. You have pedigree coming from no the, more Sammy Watkins. the Clemson offense. Uh, not an outstanding production profile for him, but not an outstanding profile production for, for Amari Rogers, who went in the third round, I believe it was. So... He's he's one of those like it's it's fun to try and call your shots on these really late round guys, but and Powell is one of them that you should at least keep one eye on. Yeah, let I mean, me ask I, you a question: Is Demarcus Robinson going to have a fantasy relevant season this no, year? No, of course no. not. Um, he'll have games, but you won't be able to call your shot on those. I the way that this draft happened for Kansas City. My outlook is I, I think I think you're going to have really good seasons for Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and Pat Mahomes. That's that's my analysis <laughs> what about here. Clyde? Yeah, sure, Clyde, Clyde too. But really, nah, Tyreek Hill took that. and Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes are still going to be good. Darrell Williams seems um, seems locked in as the backup. 
they didn't draft another yes. uh, that's right. between that's the true. tackle player. But I would go with Tyree Kill, yeah. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, <laughs> and Pat <laughs> Holmes and take it to the bank. Oh, that's right. So we'll wrap up the AFC winners and losers. NFC winners and losers coming on Thursday. Dynasty week coming up uh, a week from today. Ooh. And so there is a lot happening. You can get into the uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit right now, the UDK Plus at ultimatedraftkit.com. And we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting this show. A Cam Akers signed NFL football, 20 bucks right now, ends Thursday night. Signed Saquon, inscribed NFL Rookie of the Year jersey. It's at $50 right now. There are hundreds of uh, signed. These guys just got me a Justin Jefferson helmet for my yeah. birthday from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS if you head over there. They'll give you $10 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Man, that was a lot. What Whoa. a week. What a show. Is James Robinson any better at the end of the show than he was at the beginning? Mm -mm. Well, he's still good. He just He's not going to play. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh... Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.